So I wanted to start off today with a quote from C.S. Lewis, because today is actually the anniversary of his passing. And so um, one of the things that I liked that he said was, day, every, every day nothing really changes, except when you look back, everything has changed, something like that. And um, I just thought that, you know, that was really profound for me and, and as far as my journey is concerned, but I've been sharing a little bit more about my story and, you know, how I came to, came to be doing all of this and moving around and traveling and, you know, what's been happening. Well, it first started as a health journey. You know, I was looking for, um, I was looking to get healthier. I was looking to get m more fit and to just feel better really inside. And so one of the things that I did in the beginning, well, first let me start off by saying I had had um, breast cancer and anybody that actually is going through cancer will know that just the thought of it, even if it isn't severe, even if it's just, I, I can't say mild, but if, it, if it's um, a low level or low grade cancer and even if it's that, it's still um, it's still a change within your your mental state, within your physical state. You know you have to make some changes, and so you start searching for for ways to do that. And that's what happened to me. Um, you know, I I shared a little bit about that. I think a post or two. And um, <clears throat> so when that happened, um, you know, I started changing my eating habits. Started changing my with the way I moved in the world, um, <laughs> moved my body. And, um, and it worked, you know, it helped a lot. And, um, but, you know, five surgeries later, radiation, you know, it was, it was a lot to go through. And by the end of it, I wound up, um, you know, I, everything's still intact, which is great, but, you know, it's, it was very sore and um, my whole side was very sore underneath my arm and I couldn't even move my arm above this, this level, you know, and when I tried to work out, I had hired a trainer for a while and I did very, very well with him, but um, I really had a hard time struggling to lift the weight up. And so now, I mean, I'm perfect. It's great. But when I first began, it wasn't like that. And it was just little by little, those little moments, those little um, efforts that actually made a big difference and investing in myself made a big difference. And I, I guess I'm sharing this with you because I know how far I've come and I know I still have a long way to go. I, and then, you know, sometimes it's a slow process, you know, sometimes we, we fall back down and we have to get back up. Um, and that's okay. You know, it, it's okay to do that. Um, but you know, when I, when I had that, I, like I said, I was so sore under here. I couldn't really move my arm all at all. It was, it was like right about here is where I was able to lift it. And the weights were just terrible. And I would shake trying to lift it up to right here. Um, because there had been so much disturbance to, to the muscles and the nerves in that area. And then also, um, what I had was, um, what they call lymphedema. Now they told me that radiation didn't cause this, but I don't know if I believe that. Um, in fact, I don't think I believe it at all. I think the radiation did cause it. Um, but I had had radiation on this part of my body, but what happened was I had, um, like a pop happen behind my knee and my whole leg actually went like this weird numb feeling and lymphedema is a, it's very difficult to touch it. Um, you can't like, you don't want even water hitting it is how sensitive your, your skin becomes and it's nerve. I think it's nerve damage. So I had that in my leg and then it happened in my arm as well. So some, at some point I don't no popping or anything happened, but at some point it just got so bad in my arm that, um, I, and in my chest also, and I would shower like this because I didn't want like the water 
just was so painful and so it was such a sensitive area. And so, um, you know, but I was determined, I was determined not to continue that down that path. I didn't want to live my life like that. And I know that a lot of people are out here suffering, you know, they, they may have lymphedema, you may have excessive swelling, you might have problems, you know, moving, like just movement alone, it could be an issue. And I, you know, when, when I first started at back at the gym, I was, I was really only able to walk a little bit on the treadmill. I was way overweight. And, um, you know, I think I started, remember what I was doing. I think it was like a half an hour, you know, to an hour at the gym, but most of it, I would take like five minutes on the treadmill or 10 minutes on the treadmill. I wouldn't go very fast, but I'd just walk, you know, and then I moved to something else and I'd go back and I'd just walk a little bit more. And it was just that constant, um, the constant, uh, drive to just continue to, to improve. Right. And then eventually I got faster and faster and I, the time got longer and longer. So I guess I would just say to you that, you know, if you're struggling with anything, just know that you're not alone and there is hope because if you just take those little steps and it seems, it doesn't seem like much. And, and I'm talking to myself too right now because I've been slacking again and I don't want to do that. Um, so it's good for me to remember where I came from. And I think we all can benefit from that, you know, to give us, a gives our, give ourselves a little bit of grace, but also to be realistic and know that nobody's going to change our lives for us. We have to do it ourselves. We have to be the ones that stand up and say enough is enough. And that's what I did back then. You know, I, like I said, I changed my eating habits. I, um, the, after the second time I became actually vegan for a couple of years and that was, that made a big difference that changed a lot within my body. Um, and I would also, um, not only go to the gym and start moving more and changing my eating habits, but I also would do fastings. And I don't know if you've heard of that. I do have a program that's available that um, talks about that. And so if you're interested, just send me an email. But it's, um, I would do a water fast for several days, you know, anywhere between 24 hours to seven days. I haven't gone past seven days, but um, I found that that is a really good uh, time period for me, depending on what's going on. And um, that turned uh, around a lot. Now that doesn't help. It did not help my lymph lymphedema that I had had. Um, but let me jump back to that. So when I had the lymphedema in my arm and my leg, it took me a couple years to get that to go away. Excuse me. But what I did was I did a body brushing. So I had gone to a physical therapist, an actual physical therapist. And I was paying $50 a, a session every time I would go. And she told me, um, there was no reason for me to continue to pay her, which I was grateful, um, because I could do this at home on my own. And what we were doing was she was just taking a brush and, and like, um, it's almost like a bath brush, but, um, you can get it from bed, bath and beyond. That's where I got mine. Um, it's like a wicker, like a, like a wicker handle or a roped handle with, um, I don't even know what the fiber is, but it, it's, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure that out. Okay. So it's called sisal, which is the material of the actual brush itself. And, um, it's got like, um, a, a wood handle and then it's got rope around it. And you can just look it up on, even on Amazon nowadays, and they sell it. It's called the dry body brushing or dry body brush or something. And, um, they have, they have actual diagrams online that you can pull off and, um, see how you're supposed to be doing this because you want to, uh, brush your body in a way that it takes the lymphatic fluid and it moves it into the largest lymphatic, um, <clears throat> lymphatic 
uh, ducts that we have in our body. So you brush in a certain way to move that fluid so it goes to that area, which is basically at your center core. Um, so you brush down, you know, from your head down into your center core and from your feet up and on both sides of your body, back and front, um, from your feet up to the center core, you know, and, and then around like this, um, you know, to the center. And that actually, like I said, I did that for two years and I did it every day, every single morning before I would take a shower, I would take the brush and I would brush my entire body. And it took less than five minutes. I don't even know how long. And over time, it actually, like I could feel in the beginning, I could actually feel the fluid flowing through my body after I would brush. It was kind of a, a, an amazing feeling. I, it was nice. Um, now I don't feel it so much because I think my, the fluid is actually flowing the way it's supposed to most of the time now. But what was really encouraging is I could tell that there was starting, like at first I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to touch any of this, but I had to. So I did. And, um, you know, I brushed the area and, and all of that. And over time I could see that I could start to take showers and I didn't have to, you know, cower in the shower <laughs> and stay away from the water because the water was just making it so sensitive. And so I was able to shower freely. <clears throat> and then over time, it went completely away, completely away. And one day I, I just, I was brushing and I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't even have this anymore. And so I stopped for a while. And then I found that I had a little like twinge of some issue with my leg. So I started again um, several months later and I probably did it four or five times. And haven't had to do it since. I do still keep the brush with me in case, you know, anything does creep up or come back. Or if I feel like, you know, I've been sitting sedentary for a while and I feel like I just need to um, get that fluid flowing, then I do that. Um, but it does help. So I coupled like that with, with the better eating and the movement and the going to the gym. Um, it made a huge difference in my life and I was really looking to heal and, and that's exactly what I did, you know? And <clears throat> like I said, it's a good reminder for me because I feel like, you know, I, I go through, I'm a little bit of a roller coaster when it comes to self care probably. And, you know, I, mean, I guess we probably all are, but, um, well, not all, <laughs> there's some that are very good at it, but, um, I think that like right now I'm just sort of reminding myself that I need to, um, nobody's going to do it for me. I need to get up and I need to just, you know, exercise and do the things that I need to do that I know I need to do in order to care best for myself. Right. And I would just encourage you to start making a plan of some little things that you can try and it doesn't have to be all at once. You know, you can start with just, um, just something small and, you know, just build yourself up, make a list of some things that you want to give it, give a shot uh, at trying and see if that works. And really it's, um, it's trial and error mostly, you know, there's lots of, lots of studies, lots of, um, videos that you can watch, lots of information that's out there, but really it goes by what you, what you're feeling. If something doesn't feel right, if it, then it's just not for you. Um, you know, some people are not able to fast. They just don't have the the ability to really get past that first 24 hours. They, they just don't, um, it doesn't sit well with them and that's okay. You know, so, so that's not for them and they'll just try something else. But if you don't, if you never try anything, then how are you going to, how are you going to heal? How are you going to feel better? How's, how's life going to change for you? right? I guess I would encourage you to just experience yourself in a more intimate way. You know, think about where you want to be, what you want to be accomplishing, how you want to be living in the world. You know, do you want to be um, not there for your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren? Do you want to, 
you know, be sitting in a rocking chair on a porch? Or do you want to be out kind of walking with them and playing with them? I mean, the choice is all ours, really. I mean, we can't, we can't fix everything, right? But the things that we can control, we should. And, you know, that's where, that's where I'm coming from. You know, I've been, been still trying to do little changes and, you know, life has been a little bit of a roller coaster lately. So it's, you know, time for me to get back into, get back into my game and start, you know, treating myself a little bit better with a little bit um, more kindness because, you know, when we don't, when we don't exercise, when we don't eat right, when we don't fast or whatever the case may be for you, for me, it would be fasting. When we don't do those things, when we don't meditate, we don't take that time to just soothe yourself. You're, you, I mean, you risk getting sick for one. And number two, you just don't do yourself any justice. You, you make your path so much harder than it has to be, you know, but by taking an hour or two, uh, a day, probably just an hour for, for certain things, maybe an hour and a half. If you include meditation, um, your life can drastically improve. Your mood can improve. Your skin can improve. Your blood flow will, imp it will improve your movement and ability to move will improve. You know, there's lots of benefits to taking care of ourselves. <laughs> Who knew? So I guess I would just say, um, you know, start small, you know, don't, don't take on too much. Um, and once you're able to see that flowing and it just becomes habit for you, then take on the next thing. Um, sometimes I take on too much all at once and then I wind up, you know, just wanting to drop it all. And I don't want to do that, you know, because I have come a, a long way. And, uh, and, you know, I got a little ways to go and, and that's okay, but I'm proud of, you know, where I've come from and how I've gotten to where I'm at, you know, lost a tremendous amount of weight and I'm able to move. My skin is not, um, you know, like it was like a little pocky, like you could just tell the pores in it and it's not like that anymore. And, um, you know, my arm, I can put my arm right up above my head. I can do whatever I need to do with it. There's no constraint with it at all anymore. Um, I'm able to lift the, the weights that I want to lift, you know, so I have, I've come a long way and I don't, I no longer have the lymphedema and I no longer feel like I need to heal, which is amazing. Somewhere along the line, I lost that need to heal, which is a good feeling because you know, if you heal, if you, if you're looking to heal, that means you, you are coming from a place where you don't feel well. Right. And that's where I was coming from. A tremendous amount of not feeling well with all of that stuff going on. And so I, I feel like, you know, I've come a long way and there's been some drastic changes, but you know, we all have, we all have different goals. And I think that there's some new ones that I can set and, uh, try to achieve those. And I hope you do too. You know, I hope you see that there's hope here that no matter what you're going through, whether it be cancer, whether it be, you know, troubled relationships, whatever you're going through, you have to put yourself first. And until you do that, nothing's going to change because nobody can, nobody can fix what's going on with you. You know, you can't wait for somebody. And I think, I think another thing is that, um, that I want to share with you is that I realized that if I continued to wait for somebody else to do something with, that it was never going to happen. You know, we have to start taking the bull by the horns and just learning to go out and do things on your own. And when I first started, that was a, that was a big no, no. <laughs> like I wouldn't even, I couldn't even go out side my office and walk my community because I was just, um, feeling some anxiety over it. And there was no reason for it. Uh, zero reason, but I had it. I never would go out to dinner by myself or, or anything. 
uh, like that. I would never go to the movies by myself. I would never even consider it. Um, and now, so I started off with um, going to lunch by myself. And that led me to various other things, being able to go out into my communities that I was managing, being able to now go to dinner or to a movie or to wherever I'd like, wherever I want to go. I, it doesn't matter if I don't have somebody to go with, it doesn't stop me. I go anyway. Um, so I would also say to you, you know, to, to push yourself outside those comfort zones, because once you do, you find a whole wealth of new life within you and out there, <laughs> you know, there's so much to do and it's scary to think that if I had sat around and continued to wait, you know, hoping that I had a partner to go do this with or hoping that, you know, a friend would want to come and join me for lunch or, you know, how many times I would have missed in good food, great times, sceneries that I would never have seen, people, new people I met that I would never have met had I not gone wherever I decided to go. You know, I, I just would say that our world is amazing and the people in it, most of them are good people. And, you know, if you, if you hide yourself away, you're never going to see that, you know, or if you wait for somebody to come along, whether it be a relationship or a friend or whatever, you know, or you know, in my case, my kids grew, you know, I always had my kids there. So I always had somebody that was going with me to do something, you know, <laughs> whether I wanted it or, or not in, in that, those particular moments, there was always somebody there. But then when you're left on your own and you know, the kids are grown, what are you going to do? You know, you can, you can wither away and stay in home and, and do nothing or you can get up and brush yourself off and figure it all out. And I would, ex I would just say that it's worth figuring it all out. It absolutely is. You know, I would hate to think that I'd still be, you know, sitting in an old, on an old couch, reading the newspaper or whatever the case and not being out experiencing some of the things that I've been able to experience. And it's been, it's been a blessing. It's been hard sometimes, but it's really been a blessing. And, uh, I would encourage you to do that, you know, to just push yourself outside those, your, your comfort zone, uh, a little bit because it, it is worth it. And, you know, if you are looking to heal, like I said, if you're going through, you know, cancer treatments, if you're going through troubles, that there is a brighter path for you. You just have to seek it. You have to see, do your research, find out, you know, what natural methods there are for whatever ails you. Look at, look online. There's tons of information. Search for those things that are the natural healing, that have natural healing properties, whether it be, you know, drinking a special tea every once in a while, or whether it be eating more vegetables, which I highly recommend. Um, I, right now try to do 80 to 90% vegetable, uh, and then, you know, whatever other than that. Um, I don't do a lot of meat, so I, I still try to eat, um, in that way. So, and I highly recommend that to you as well. <clears throat> but, um, you know, just look for those things, look for those things that would support you that will help you to walk an easier path, you know, and even if you have to just crawl a little bit for a while, that's okay. Cause eventually you're going to get up and walk. I promise. So that's all for today. <laughs> I hope this helps you. I know it reminds me that I, I have some things I need to really buckle down on. And, um, you know, now that I don't feel as if I need to heal anymore, I feel like I have the strength to actually do it now. So good luck to me and good luck to you. <laughs>